Happy Sunday, everybody. Welcome back. You know what Sunday means. It's another episode of the Sunday Conversation with myself, CFC DP, and we are going to be looking into today Rafael Liao, Anthony Gordon, and the winger conundrum that Chelsea are having and what it means for the future. Now, Chelsea have clearly shown an interest in the wing forward department during this window, signing Raheem Sterling, looking to move on from Hakeem Ziyech, Callum Hudson-Odoi, potentially Christian Pulisic. And it leaves Chelsea with a void that Tuchel is not happy with. Now, at this point, Mason Mount is playing right wing and starting there. He has gotten the hook early in a couple games this season, hasn't really shown much at all. And you would have to say that Mason Mount is at a point where he could be dropped from the squad. Um, I don't think that Mount himself is ready for that because I think it's going to cause a little bit of a conundrum in the locker room with Mason Mount as potentially one of the young leaders, um, potentially future captain. And if he is not meeting expectations and Thomas Tuchel's potential, then we're going to have a problem. So Mason Mount can't be that right winger. So now we get to the point of Anthony Gordon. The deal for Anthony Gordon, as all reports have kind of led to this, is that Everton are not as keen to sell the player as the player is keen to move to Chelsea. Now, this can cause a bit of a rift. Now, Everton is Gordon's home. Gordon has been an Everton player since he was a kid, Um, grown up, loves the club, scored a goal for them on the weekend. It appeared to be a goodbye, but it's hard to say whether or not that they would move on him. Now, Everton is hard-pressed for cash. They need to sell some players, even though they sold Richarlison. Getting $60 million um, for a player of Gordon's quality is fantastic, but If it comes at them dropping out of the Premier League, that's a deal that they can't make happen because dropping out of the Premier League is a over 200 million pound loss, while Gordon would only be a 60 million pound gain. So it's a real dilemma that Everton have to go through with Anthony Gordon. And Frank Lampard doesn't want to sell the player because that would be yet another one of his attacking options gone. Now you start to look at Everton and you say, who who do they have? They sold with Charleston. Dominic Calvert-Lewin is hurt all the time. Anthony Gordon would be gone. Deli Alley would be gone. It would be a lot to try and keep that team up um, without Anthony Gordon. So now we get into the broader dilemma, the Chelsea-centric dilemma of is Gordon worth that amount? Now, many fans, many fans would believe he is not. Now, at his age... Under 22 years old, his ability in his Premier League seasons, uh, last season and started this season, to make really good pressures, make a lot of runs, find shots on target, hasn't always led to goals, but he is a class player that is only going to get better with more experience and more time. And Chelsea to say, if we can get him for 50 million, 60 million right now, that could be a good return on investment in the future and could be getting a guy at a lower price and kind of dealing with some of the growing pains that he might have to go to. Now, it would be a little bit easier if a Christian Pulisic wasn't here or a Hakeem Ziyech wasn't here. However, I don't know if that's not going to happen or not. Now, Anthony moving to Man United for a huge fee leaves a spot open at Ajax where Ziyech was very successful. Talks are that Ziyech would have no problem going back there. His wages, however, could be an issue. The fee of £37 million, reportedly, that Boley is asking for could be an issue. So there's a lot of moving parts. But I think when you look at Gordon and Liao, you are seeing a mold of a player that Tuchel values and rates. Now, Gordon is a player that could play that right mid right wing back role that Ruben Loftus-Cheek is playing because of his work rate, his ability to be creative in the offensive third, his ability to track back and put in a tackle and put in a challenge. 
And Liao is a dynamo up front. I mean, you're talking a player who is physically one of the more scary uh, athletic characters in all of world football at such a young age. His 120 million euro release clause is in effect. AC Milan appears to be staying to that. But Chelsea do have a wild card into effect that if they were able to help him get over his CAS um, fines, which is over 16 million euros reportedly, that would be a factor that would be interesting for all parties. And it appears that Chelsea may be able to do such a thing. Now reports have come that Liao and Nkunku are the candidates for next window. But with Liao only having one, two years left on his deal, this might be a time for Chelsea to go. But you are starting to see the profile that Tuchel is looking for in his attack. Versatility. Players that are direct, have ball skills, and are able to shoot and put the ball on net. And younger players. Because I think Chelsea, overall, need to think that this window of winning a Premier League is not now. And I think Boley understands that. He looks at the landscape. He looks at Guardiola. He looks at Klopp's teams. And he says... The time to win a Premier League is going to be in two or three years. So getting Chukwu Mweka in, getting Gordon in, getting Liao in, getting Kasade in, Harvey Vale, all these young guys that they're getting in is going to be critical to beat that championship window that will be left vacant when Manchester City starts to lose some of their players. Now Manchester City and Liverpool are obviously going to try and retool, but if you look at their age profiles they are probably going to be falling off within the next two, three, four years. And Boley is going to be ready to win then. So, yes, he's going to make signings like Raheem Sterling, potentially Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, um, to get them into top four and keep them fighting for cups and titles and stuff now. But to win the Premier League, they are going to be targeting that 2024, 2025, 2026 window. Because that's when... All these talents are going to be at a, not a prime age, but at a peak age. So you're going to start to see Chelsea become a lot more competitive. Now, they are a competitive team, but they got older and they have to retool. So if they take a step back this year, people need to be okay with it. Chelsea fans will be upset. The quality dropped, all that dropped. But when you look at it, it hasn't dropped. It hasn't. Chelsea are now moving the age profile of their team. And that's the biggest thing. Fafana, moving the age profile. Gordon will be moving the age profile. Liao, moving the age profile. So on and so forth. Chuka Mweka, all the other players that I mentioned before. Omari Hutchinson. So Chelsea and Todd Boley are understanding, and this is a little bit of American in it, because in America, in the NBA or the NFL, If you aren't going to win the title, your best thing to do is to lose because you can get a better draft pick, which is getting good young players. Um, You get the first opportunity to sign them and pick them in the draft. That's kind of how the draft works. I'm not sure if anybody knows how that is, but that's how it works. So if Chelsea are therefore moving their age profile back, similar to what Arsenal did, Arsenal moved their age profile back. Now they had a lot of these guys in-house. But Chelsea sold them all recently. Tamori, Gohi, Abraham moved on from them. So Boley has said, we got to retool. We got to rebuild. This is why Neil Bath has been at the head of operations. Chelsea are going to take a step back in the next two years. And we're not going to be contending necessarily for the Premier League this season or next season. Now, talent-wise would say that we probably will still be top four and maybe contending in the ballpark. But as long as Manchester City and Liverpool are still around, you are not going to see Chelsea crack them. And I think Bowley and Tuchel have accepted this. Now, they're not publicly ever going to say this. They're not. They would lose a fan base so quickly. But if you look at how they are moving with their transfers, they're buying to keep themselves relevant today, but to excel in the future. So keep an open mind when you see some of these moves and you say, oh, well, why isn't Chelsea going after uh, a Raum or some older age profile guys in positions? Well, their time to win isn't now. 
it, it's three, four years in the future. And Bully understands that. If you look at how Todd Bully made his money in the past, it was buying assets young, waiting until maturity, and then reaping the benefits at that point. That's exactly what he's doing with this football club. He is buying assets young, buying them cheaper, and they're going to develop, and he's going to put assets into the academy, into the coaching, into the facilities, and it's going to make the team better in three to four years. So while this conversation started with Liao and Gordon, it's important to understand that this argument for signing these players, especially Gordon in this instance, it values the argument of them moving on in three or four years and saying, we will win the Premier League in this title window. That's when everyone's going to be ready. As long as City has Holland and De Bruyne, it's going to be hard. As long as Liverpool has Nunez and Salah and Diaz and all those guys, it's going to be hard. And I'm not saying those teams are going to fall off a cliff, but Chelsea will truly be able to compete with these teams over a full 38-game Premier League season. The last four seasons, the third-place team has finished on average of 16.25 games behind the second-place team, Manchester City or Liverpool. That is alarming, and that's a number. It's so simple to go ahead and do, and that's to show how far we are off the top two. And I think Bowley understands this. I think Tuchel understands this. It may get hard. Now, they're doing their best to ease the pain. Raheem Sterling, potentially Aubameyang, Koulibaly. But they are buying youth for the correct title window. And I just want that to be apparently clear with Chelsea fans. So... If you were saying, why are they going to spend 60 on Anthony Gordon? Look at Todd Bully's investments. Look at where he has put his money in the past. He's invested. He's an investor. He's a gambler. If Tuchel wants Gordon, Bully has a number that he'll go up to. He'll look at who Tuchel deems is not significant for the squad. That might be Gallagher. That might be Broja. And Chelsea fans are going to need to be okay with that. Because if they're not, then you're not going to allow Chelsea to build a team in the eye of Thomas Tuchel, which Manchester City and Liverpool have done. And Real Madrid. And Barcelona. And those teams are flying high right now simply for the fact that every single player on that squad was hand-picked by the manager. And it's faith. And you have to trust that the manager is good enough to get you there. And I know that sometimes that the uh, the question's still out there about Tuchel. But Boley has said that I am going to back the manager with his players. To what point and what number is not too much? Time will tell. But if it does get to that point and Boley's willing to pay it, you can't question that he's not following his word that he said. He really rates how Liverpool built things, how Fenway Sports Group built it. I think Todd Bowley is going to do the same. I want to thank you so much to listening to my Sunday conversation. I want to thank you for tuning in on whatever platform it is, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or YouTube. I want to thank you for all the really awesome feedback I've gotten. We are now over 100, 100 subscribers on YouTube, which is an awesome goal. I want to get to over 200 quickly. I have some awesome guests coming up for you shortly. We'll be announcing those on my Twitter at CFCDP1. Please stay tuned with the channel. We are going to be coming out with a Southampton match preview within the next 48 hours. It is going to be a busy week with these midweek features, so I am ready to give you guys some awesome content, some awesome guests. So go ahead, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, turn your notifications on, and stay up to date with my content that's going to be coming out for you on a very rapid basis. I want to thank you very much, and have a fantastic rest of your night.